In this week's episode, I show you how I made a custom 3D printed nail and screw rack. I'll show you how I did it on today's Film of Friday. You could have built that with wood. You could have used PVC pipe. Just use the tools that are on your bench. Those are just some of the helpful comments I get on many of my 3D printing videos. And they're not wrong. I could do it with wood. I could do it with my tools. But many times it's better to do it with my 3D printer. This is a perfect example of where 3D printing really comes in handy. I've got these boxes of nails and screws that I keep in a cabinet back here and I'm constantly pulling them out, pull, putting them back in, trying to find the right one. Or I go buy another one, find out I already had it buried in the bottom of the cabinet. So I said I need to build a rack for these on the wall so I can easily get to them and see what I got. At first, they took their suggestion, and I went to a couple of woodworking YouTubers that I watch, April Wilkerson, who I've met a couple times at Maker Fairs, and I've been watching her since she was like 10,000 subscribers, so she's really grown. She built a nice rack for hers on the wall, but when she was done, she wanted to build another one because she ran out of slots. Another guy is DIY Tyler, and he's a local guy here in Michigan. I met him at a local meetup. And he built a really nice rack, but when he was done, he had extra boxes that he needed to mount on the side. So that told me I need to come up with a modular design that I can easily expand. And that's why I designed Simple. I made a simple box with two holes in the back for mounting to the wall, one for each box of screws or nails, and then I can just print more as I get more boxes. So let me show you how I did this in Tinkercad and printed it on my CR10 and on my Prusai 3 and show you how it turned out. I opened my favorite software, Tinkercad. I brought in the ruler so I could do some parametric measurements. And then I measured the boxes and they measured 120 millimeters by 50 millimeters by 90 millimeters. So I made that from a whole box here in Tinkercad. And then I lifted it five millimeters off the bed and slid in a solid box. And this one I made 10 millimeters bigger or five millimeters bigger on all sides. Only I didn't go as tall because I wanted the screw or nail box to stick out. And then I centered that in the X and Y direction, grouped it together, and I had the beginnings of my box. All I needed was two holes in order to put the screws to the wall. So I brought in a hole cylinder, made it five millimeters in diameter, and to make this easier to see, I turned the box, the solid box, into a hole so I could see through it. Then I duplicated that cylinder that I made, slid it over, just eyeballed it here. And then what I did is I grabbed both of those holes and grouped them together as one unit. And then I grabbed everything and I did a center in the X and Y direction. And this centered the holes to the box. And then I made the box solid again. So the only thing left to do is drag those cylinder holes down lower so they go through the box. So I just grabbed the arrow for them and dropped it through and then grouped everything together. And there was the box. This took me less than 10 minutes to, to make this. So now it was off to Simplify 3D to slice it. So I brought in a Simplify 3D. Everything looked good. There was no gaps or holes or nothing. Went to Edit Process Settings and I chose my CR10. I used PLA. 15% uh, infill. I'm going to use a layer height of 0.3 with three top and bottom layers and three out, outer perimeter shells. No skirt, no brim, no raft. Infill, like I said, 15%. No support needed. 40 degrees on the bed. 215 degrees for the filament. And I'm just using a cheap inland filament. Black. I do have the fan enabled. And I printed this fast at 80 millimeters per second. And once I sliced it, it looked good. And it said it would take 3 hours and 34 minutes to print this guy. 41 meters of plastic. And a cost of just under $2. I sent it to my CR10, it started printing, it was looking good, so then I went out and did do some woodworking. I replaced these rails on our deck that were bent and rotted, and then painted it all up, and once I got that done, I went back and looked, and it was still printing. So I got out the weed whacker and went out and weed whacked the yard around my wife's she shed, so got that done, and went back, and then the print was done. Now I'd also printed on my Prusa i3 using filamentum, vertigo gray that came with it so I had two boxes done and then I just started printing some more and they came out really good and once I had a stack of them then I started mounting to the wall two screws I've made the first sure the first one was level and then just stacked them on top 
top of each other and shot two screws. I even printed some blue ones in filamentive PETG. And so this gives me the opportunity to print in different colors without having to paint. The results, they worked out really good. They're really solid, there's no sagging. Few of these boxes are full, and I don't notice any sagging at all. So it really worked well. And I got the different colors, so I got the smaller screws in the blue, nails in the black, and the larger screws in the gray. And I can do multiple colors, and I don't have to paint. Isn't that an advantage? If I build it out of wood, I'd have to paint it to make it look better. So having the option to do different colors, I don't know, that's a bonus. And the other thing is, if I ever need to buy another box of nails or screws, before I run out to the store, I can just start the print. And then while I'm at the store and come home, use the nails or screws when I'm ready to put it away, that box is probably already printed, sitting on the printer, ready to be mounted for the nails or screws to go into. So this modular approach, I think, works really well. Yeah, I could have done it in wood. Yeah, I probably could have done some kind of PVC setup. But then I wouldn't have got my trimming done. I wouldn't have got my deck done. So the 3D printer is definitely a partner to me in my shop. And because I got multiple printers, I'm lucky I've got multiple helpers. So that's why I like doing stuff with 3D printing. Another advantage to 3D printing these is I can share the file so you can print it out yourself with none of the work. So if I did it in wood, I'd have to share the plans and then you'd have to do the work. Of course, some people like to do that, but that's the advantage of 3D printing. And I share all my 3D prints on Thingiverse. I don't charge for them. So I just give it back to the community. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, check out some of these videos popping up. And if you want to help support the channel, dollar a month to Patreon. It's only 25 cents per film a Friday. And if nothing else, click on that logo and subscribe. We're going to cross 18,000 as I film this. That's pretty cool. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Film of Friday.